All right. Welcome everyone to our talk called Scaling Security Through Context-Based Security Assessments. I'll start with a quick disclaimer. The views uh, in this presentation are those of our own and they do not represent necessarily those of Splunk, but we're very thankful to Splunk to allow us, like for allowing us to do this, this talk and building something that we're very proud of and, and showcasing to all of you. So I will start with a quick rundown of the agenda. Um, I'm sure after the fun introduction John gave us, you'd love to know more about us. And even if you don't, uh, give us a chance, you'll like us. So we'll start with a quick intro of ourselves, then we'll go on to talk about who this presentation is for, and then what you should expect. Hopefully uh, you'll make a decision to stay and listen to the rest of it once you know what this is all about. And uh, through um, the rest of the presentation, we will walk you through the story of an engineering team and a product security team at your friendly neighborhood high growth company. And I'm sure a lot of you will relate to this story. Uh, through these stories though, you'll learn about the challenges, the common challenges these teams face. And we'll talk about the different ways to tackle these challenges. Like there's obviously different ways to solve the problem, right? So we'll talk about the different approaches and then finally arrive at the approach we picked and um, you know, we just didn't pick an approach. We decided to actually build a tool to support this approach. So we'll demo that tool and then we'll talk about uh, the roadmap. So I'll start with a quick intro about myself. Um, here's a picture that looks lot, nothing like me right now. Uh, and I, look, I lead the product security team at Splunk. Uh, I've worked here for over five years and previously as a principal engineer on the same team. Uh, of all the things I've been fortunate to accomplish here, I'm personally very proud of creating the tooling and automation function and you know, bringing in all the awesome people on this team. Um, and this talk today wouldn't have been possible without all of us together here. Um, started my career on the offensive side and um, transitioned over to doing security engineering, uh, helping software development teams um, build secure software, right? I consider myself very fortunate to have had the opportunity to work at large companies and small startups doing uh, work in security. And uh, that's why I'm also passionate about helping people grow in their careers. I started this thing um, along with a couple of other, um, you know, security leaders in, in um, different tech companies called the Security Mentor Club. Um, please join us um, and ask questions if, if you have anything, any questions about growing your career. And finally, I've been, I'm interested in advising startups, interested in blockchains, and recently been working very hard on my dad jokes. Uh, and no, I'm not crazy. I'm actually going to be a dad in a couple of weeks and I'm pretty stoked about it. So that's the reason why I'm working very hard on those. I'll call on Andrew to do his intro. Nice, hi, I'm Andrew. I'm the senior tooling and automation engineer for uh, Splunk's product security team. I have five years of software engineering experience that ranges from cybersecurity, big data analytics, data and developer infra, as well as tooling and automation. I've been an Eagle Scout since 2010, and I really love to hike. So on the weekends, I try to find new hiking spots around the San Ramon, Danville, Dublin area um, of California. And I'm also a huge Rick and Morty fanatic. So I've been watching reruns of that pretty much every dinner time. Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, thanks for joining us. My name is Sanjeev. Uh, on the right there, you can see a picture of me when I was a, a little bit hairier than I am today. But uh, I'm a product security engineer at Splunk, um, where I work on the tooling and automation team with uh, Teja and Andrew. And uh, prior to that, I was actually uh, an intern at Splunk. So I, I really enjoyed my time here. I love the team, which is why I'm still here. But uh, before I was at Splunk, I was doing uh, CS at UCSD and UIUC, uh, where I did my master's actually at UIUC. A lot of my uh, security interests uh, revolve around web privacy and uh, software integrity systems. So um, I was focusing a lot on web fingerprinting and uh, building systems for consensus. And uh, you know, I consider myself a bit of a renaissance man. So I have a, a wide soup of interests as I like to call it. So I'm very much into visual arts. I am um, a sculptor, also big into mechanics. It's a hobby I've stuck with for about five years now. Um, so I build them, I customize them, I make uh, special keycaps for them. And then uh, I'm also into climbing like many other software engineers. And uh, as uh, John mentioned, Legos are a, a big part of my shelf space. Uh, and then finally, I guess, since 
Uh, I didn't get to travel much these past couple of years. I, I got into GeoGuessr where I get dropped in a random location on Google Maps and try to figure out where I am. So that's been my El Chico way of traveling the world. Awesome. See, I told you guys you'll like this. Uh, but let's start with, with the meat of the talk. So who is this talk really for? So this talk is for product security teams at high growth organizations. And um, I, I want you to, uh, guys to pay attention. It's high growth, not large organizations, uh, because we think high growth organizations are usually fast moving organizations where uh, you often find that there is an imbalance in the supply of product security engineers and the demand for their time. Uh, because these organizations are always looking to build new products or features for customers. Uh, the product priorities constantly change and there are always frequent reorgs. So all these factors, um, the complexity, the rapid pace uh, of change and the volume of security engagements coming in uh, make the product security team's job really hard, right? Let's take a look at some of the common problems faced by the product security teams at high growth organizations. So one of the big things, the first big problem that uh, product security teams face is about scaling the security assessment process to ensure that there's actually sufficient security assessment coverage for the whole organization. And how does the team really scale this, this you know, coverage across the board? The second challenge is about making the end-to-end -end security engagement process or security assessment process transparent to the engineering teams up front. Uh, the type of assessment any product has to go through is determined by, you know, the context of the product and the risk, uh, which means the engineering team has to usually first wait to talk to the product security team to understand, oh, like, do I do threat modeling or do I do everything across the board or do I need to do only a pen test? So I, I think it would be much nicer if it's easy for the engineering team to know upfront what should be expected. And the third challenge is, how, how does the security team, the product security team, report the risk to different levels of engineering in the right way that's meaningful to them? So hopefully by the end of this talk, uh, you will be able to look at different solutions. Andrew, do you wanna go to the next one? Uh, so this talk, you'll be able to look at the different solutions to security assurance scaling problem and the solution we chose to build and how, uh, it can work for you. We think it will work for you know product security teams that have similar problems like the ones we've uh, we've described earlier, and we will actually go through a demo of our solution. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we're going through our open source process, and we will be able able to open source this in a couple of months. So let me take a step back actually and talk about the goals of a product security team usually in in such an organization. So in any organization that builds software. As the engineering team builds new products or features, it is very likely that they're creating new information security risk unintentionally. Uh, this security risk they create on a day-to-day -day basis is unknown in the beginning, unless somebody does an exercise to discover or identify the risk, right? So it is the responsibility of the product security team to convert this unknown risk into known risk by performing different types of manual and automated security assessments. Once this risk is known, it is also the job of the product security team to report on the risk and ensure that it is addressed. So in other words, the success of the product security team can be measured by how well they complete the security assessments in the red box here, and how well they ensure that the risk is addressed by providing timely and actionable input on addressing the risk. Sounds simple, right? Uh, it may be simple if you have one product and you know ten product security engineers on the team constantly looking at it, um, you know, and if it's a small small product. But if you have um, a bunch of products, um, it's complicated. Scale always introduces complexity and challenges. So let me actually pass it along to Andrew to demonstrate how the seemingly simple job of a product security team can be really hard at scale when there's multiple products involved. Thanks, Deja. So let's talk about a typical scenario that we often see in many organizations. We're gonna follow some common conversations encountered by engineering and product security teams. We'll then brainstorm how we can scale their workflows at a high growth organization. 
In this scenario, the product manager unexpectedly decides to end a life the next gen product that everyone has been talking about for the past six months. Now, this product has been vetted and tested and assured through multiple channels already. Now, leadership decides that we need to, that we need to build a new competition killer product in two months. Because customers expect the product to meet compliance requirements, this new experimental product must be certified in various security standards, like SOC 2 certification or PCI, for example. Now, here is a question that every engineering team would think about throughout this entire process. Can the legal, privacy, and security team just tell us what to complete quickly so that we can meet the impossible deadline? Now, let's look at this from the product security team perspective. We're about, say, a few weeks into this initiative, and now there are five new products that were not previously on the team's radar at the start of the quarter. They now need a security assessment request. Let's add some more scenarios here to prove just how high growth our organization is. Now, the business chose to acquire a new product that they plan to integrate with the flagship product, and not only that, the product manager also want users from one product to be able to seamlessly log into the other. In their mind, this should be no biggie. Also, to add the final wrench in our roadmap, the new product doesn't meet any regulatory compliance, whereas the flagship product is FedRAMP certified. We'll have to ask the engineering team to also make sure that the new products are FedRAMP compliant. Wow, what can we do now? What we've learned over time is that all groups that are involved in this process want the product security engagement process to be as quick and painless as possible. At this point, you're probably sense that the feeling of being overwhelmed with the task at hand. This particular engineering team would definitely want a simple and efficient engagement model for security assessments. This engagement model needs to be very clear on what the security controls that the product should meet, especially if there are multiple facets of security engagements that is involved within the product. This engagement model needs to be well-defined with the end-to-end -end assessment trackable and deliverable once the tasks are completed. This model needs to be quick and with the turnaround time on engagements being sufficient enough so that the engineering team can work on addressing them via code or requesting an, an exemption for the risks that were found during the assessment. Mm -hmm. Now on the flip side, the product security team that is going to perform this engagement model will need to ensure that they are quickly receiving actionable service information from the engineering teams. Ideally, they should be receiving this information with minimal knowledge and back and forth between the teams. Additionally, product security teams needs to be able to prioritize the security assessment based on the security impact of the changes made to the product. In our specific scenario, we have multiple products, some of which may have already had past security assessments done on them, and the product security team would love to save time by retrieving the context of previous assessments that may be carried over to a future request. This way, the version to version changes are very well defined. And another pain point to address, the product security team would also need to see a forecast of the volume of incoming security requests. Now that we've taken a look at the day to day scenario and what each group would like to see in a security assurance engagement model, I'll hand it off back to Teja to talk about the different avenues of thought that we employed to arrive at our solution. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew. And wow, that sounds like a fun challenge to solve. So many different desires from the security team and the engineering team. So before we actually try to solve this problem or build a solution to this, uh, I thought we should spend a few minutes uh, looking at the different possible ideas on how to approach this problem, right? Uh, so one way we can make the security engagement process quick and painless for engineering teams is actually this high touch engagement model, or that's the term we're using for it, where it, there's an embedded security engineer within each engineering team. Obviously, this makes it quick and painless because the security engineer is a part of the engineering team, knows all the context, can do security assessments on a daily basis, all his capacity is allocated to the team. And this possibly results in the highest quality security assessment outcomes. Uh, but on the flip side, remember that our challenge is to scale. In a high growth organization, the engineering team always moves fast, keeps hiring new people, builds more new things. Therefore, in order to scale this method, method or this model, we need to really 
higher security engineers equal to the number of teams or the number of products. So this is not really the ideal solution. A second way to do this uh, from a scaling perspective, which would be ideal, would be a low touch engagement model where all the security assessment process is self-service. You guys probably have seen how the most recent uh, advancements in, in uh, terms of scaling an AppSec program is, are all around integrating tools into the CI process, making you know, threat modeling automated. But I think this approach has the downside of making the security assessment more of a checkbox where uh, we assume that the output of some of these tools uh, is good enough for doing all security reviews and security teams uh, can do self-attestation. Uh, and I, I think there is a, some amount of inherent risk in putting every single product through this process. So after thinking about these two, what we arrived at is this third hybrid model where we said, okay, if the security team really has to be efficient in their goal, which is identifying risk at scale and surfacing risk, and if the dev team wants to actually build and release products quickly while taking care of the security stuff, uh, the best approach to this would be something where a security engagement request comes in or security assessment comes in from the engineering team. And there is this adjudication process where that, that request is put in a box of high security impact or medium security impact or low security impact. And then this product security team gets to spend majority of their time on the high security impact uh, changes and the, maybe the medium and low security impact changes can be put through some sort of an automated or a semi-automated process. Now, you probably have already seen the solution and you might be thinking, hey, I've seen questionnaire-based threat modeling or questionnaire-based security impact analysis. Uh, but obviously the challenge with doing that right is all around how well do you do the security impact assessment? And our epiphany or hypothesis is that by gathering all the context possible about a given product, we think we can ask better questions to do better security impact assessment. And as a result, uh, we built a solution that we think will work really well uh, to scale security through security impact assessments and gathering context. And based on the context of the product, we determine the security controls that apply to the product, uh, the, the different uh, questions that we can ask to gather more context around the product. Let's actually see brainstorm a context-based solution um, that we built, and I'll hand it off to Sanjeev to talk about the solution. Yeah, thanks, Deja. So uh, we are mentioning product context uh, this entire time. So what exactly do we mean by product context, right? What, what are we looking for when we try to service something? Uh, essentially for us, project context means salient features and engineering decisions that impact the manner in which we service a product from the security perspective. Um, so in this handy table here, we have three different types of products that you might encounter at a high growth organization that you know build software, right? You'll have your huge SaaS product that's deployed as uh, microservices. You might have uh, first party apps that are, uh, you know, distributed through an app store, or you might have a monolithic binary agent that runs on premise. And uh, the core takeaway here is that each one of these products is going to be serviced differently because each one of them has different uh, security needs that need to be met and they all operate in a different manner. And to highlight that, we've uh, we've put a list of a couple, not a couple, but actually seven different types of product contexts that we look for, right? And those are all on the right-hand side of the table here. Um, some important ones I'd like to highlight would be data context, right? Um, how is our data stored? Uh, in this product and how and, and knowing that from a security team's perspective allows us to uh, define the the tasks we need to perform to make sure that the data storage is safe and resilient uh, something else might be the deployment context um, you know a, a product that's deployed via kubernetes or some cloud infrastructure is going to be treated very differently um, has a different uh, attack surface than a product that's being deployed on premise uh, something like development context knowing what programming language is being used um, obviously that um, that changes the way in which we service the product because um, we're looking for different uh, unsafe patterns. Also the uh, the build context, if something is deployed via, or not deployed, but rather built via Jenkins CI, we're going to be providing a different set of tooling and automation um, to, to scan this, uh, this software 
as opposed to a product that's being built via GitLab CI, um, where you know your product security team might have a different set of tools that they use to, to perform uh, security actions. And then finally, something as simple as scale and customer context, right? A product that has millions of customers in general release is going to require a much more stringent security review and therefore will require more you know, effort and hours put into that review than and a small internal product that's only being touched by you know, a dozen or so engineers within the organization. So now keeping this in mind, let's think about the technical needs we would want a solution that we're going to build to, to have, right? So if we're going to build a solution that gathers this product context, uh, we first want to make sure that it guides users through tutorial-like engagement workflows. And by tutorial-like, I mean, we offer explanations for expected user inputs and tasks, and then perform error checking on user inputs where applicable, uh, because we want to make sure that our solution is gathering immediately actionable information and product context while simultaneously making a product secure, the product securities interpretation of this product context available and clear to the engineering teams. So you want engineering teams essentially to understand exactly what we're doing and know why we're performing uh, the security controls that we are performing on their particular product. Uh, secondly, we want to enable product security engineers to ask custom questions to gather relevant context. So Pratic engineers should be able to define custom questionnaires that gather the right context for their particular security workflows, right? Every product is different and we want to make sure that we can easily create and provide the right workflows for a wide range of possible product contexts and service requirements. Uh, we also want to enable product security engineers to define actions and tasks to take uh, given certain product context. So again, product security engineers should be able to define automated task assignment for certain contexts, either via a ticketing system or actual automated jobs. Um, but this kind of brings us back to the hybrid engagement model we discussed earlier. If, um, you know, if product security engineers can define how product context should be mapped to necessary security controls, then we can immediately put those curated tasks in front of ProtSec engineers for manual execution, right? So we let the decision making and the, uh, the general security scoring happen in an automated fashion. And once we have that, that impact uh, gauged and measured, we then allow you know, human product security engineers to go ahead and perform the tasks that are required. But the core takeaway here is that we are removing the human effort required to, to gauge the security impact of a particular product. And then finally, uh, we would like our solution to store reusable context snapshots of previous assessments. So if we're going to be gathering product contexts as products are being reviewed, um, it makes sense that we might as well store that context and use that context to augment future security reviews and maybe draw some insights um, about uh, ways in which we can improve our service posture. And, and we'll, we'll show you guys kind of how we do that by um, demonstrating the product security portal, which is the tool that we have built to, to meet these needs. So we're going to go ahead and show you guys the demo. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy this demo. We'll have a few words to say afterwards. All right, welcome to the product security portal. This is the tool our team has built in order to help us scale our security operations in the face of a rapidly growing and evolving organization. We're going to walk you through the tool and its numerous features and outline ways in which we think it can augment your everyday workflows as application security engineers in high growth organizations. We are currently working through the open source process to make the product security portal accessible to everyone outside of Splunk, and we hope to have a public release within the coming months. In the meantime, we hope that this demo will help you identify challenges in your daily operations that can be addressed by the product security portal. Let's jump right in. Let's put ourselves in the shoes of a member of the engineering team and walk through how we would use the product security portal to submit a security request. Along the way, we'll observe how parts of the user flows alleviate work for the product security team and facilitate our own operations. Every security request processed begins with the subject of the review, the product. Since products will be subjected to multiple security reviews throughout their lifetime, users are required to onboard their products to the product security inventory via this page. Let's go ahead and fill out this form for a new product called Blockchain Verification Service. This initial step will allow us to gather some core context about the product. This is the context that we expect to remain fairly consistent throughout various version releases of the product. As you will see later, some of the information provided here will allow us to define custom automated context-based workflow. Let's go ahead and onboard this new product. Now that our user has onboarded the new product, they can begin submitting requests for various security services. 
let's fill out the security assessment request for a new major version release of our newly created product. We can do this by selecting the product from the Choose a Product Name dropdown. From here, you can see all onboarded products, including the one we just onboarded. You may also notice this list of security controls being displayed to the user. In our case, each control represents a task that will be created in our JIRA ticketing system and assigned to a product security engineer. The list of controls will change as required given changes in the product context. For example, if we select a product that uses GitLab CI as its core CI system, the list will change to reflect a different set of security actions unique to products built via GitLab CI. For now, let's continue with the security review request process. Here we arrive at another exciting feature of the product security portal, the security impact questionnaire. Since threat modeling questions are often manually designed by an engineer based on the product's situational context, the portal can automatically curate relevant and repeatable questions based on the product's onboarded metadata. Users will be able to answer the pre-questionnaire and the responses will be recorded in a threat modeling ticket. We designed the form components to be dynamic and to showcase that in this demo, we have a question that can be rendered if and only if the product we are referencing is of product type shared library. Finally, let's submit our security request. Great, our security request has been created and we can view the corresponding JIRA tasks. Review status can be tracked via the product details page in the Inventory Explorer, another cool feature we'll get to soon. For now, let's view the JIRA tickets created for our recent request. Here, we are at the JIRA ticket tracking our security review request. You will notice that it contains all of the product context that was submitted during the product onboarding process, as well as context that was submitted during the security request process. Having all this information clearly visible on the ticket makes it easy for product security engineers to refer to a single source of truth when servicing the request. Let's now look at exactly how you might configure security control automation and decision making in the portal. The product security portal's true power lies in the freedom it gives administrators to define custom security controls and workflows. We will begin by demonstrating the functionality we have built for specifying context-based task creation on JIRA, which is our ticketing system of choice. Here we have a table of all tasks we create in JIRA via our context-based automation. Let's define a new task that we would like to enable as a security control for our newly onboarded blockchain verification service. The fields we enter here are used to satisfy the JIRA ticket API. We provide information such as the ticket type, title, body in a JIRA-specific markdown language, and component. The interesting bit lies in the next couple of form inputs. The assignment metadata input allows us to trigger the assignment of this JIRA task to a security review when the specified assignment conditions are met. Perhaps we only want this ticket created when the product's technical contact is alien at splunk.com. And maybe we only want the ticket created when the product's name is blockchain verification service. The assignment metadata also supports negation logic. Maybe we want this ticket to be created for all products except for those using Jenkins. By using negation logic, the specification is possible. As you can see, the granularity with which you can control the application of a security control is virtually limitless. Let's test this new security control and see if it gets successfully applied to a future security request. We're back in the security request submission workflow, and we're going to submit a request for the blockchain verification service. Looks like our new security control is successfully applied to this product. Recall that we specified the control product name equals blockchain verification service. So if we were to choose a different product, we'll see that control disappear. Let's just submit another request for the blockchain verification service. All right, we've submitted the security request for the blockchain verification service. Let's go to JIRA to see if our new task was created. And there it is. Let's now dive into how we can specify custom security impact questionnaires to maintain finer grained control over the security controls that apply to a product release. The product security portal provides an intuitive admin interface to make this possible. This table lists all of the questions we want to make available to our security impact questionnaires as well as the controls that apply to the rendering of each question. Let's add a new question to our questionnaire. All of the information provided here will be used to determine when and how the question should be rendered on the security impact questionnaire. We begin with the question identifier. This value is used to uniquely identify this question elsewhere in the form. It is particularly important for conditionally rendering questions later in the form based on the response to this question. Next, we will enter the question text. 
We now decide whether we want the question to be rendered by default. If we select true, this question will be asked on all security impact questionnaires moving forward. If we select false, you will notice that we are given the option to specify the conditional arguments on which the question will be rendered. In other words, the question will not be rendered on a security impact questionnaire unless all of the conditionals are met. This example dictates that the question will be rendered when the product type equals shared library. You can specify as many conditionals as you wish. This next field is used to determine whether the question should be rendered based on responses to other questions in the questionnaire. We will make use of the previously mentioned question identifiers in this section. For the sake of the example, we previously defined a simple yes or no question to ask whether there were any changes made to the cryptographic protocols used in the product release. This question is referenced by the question identifier, or QID, crypto underscore changes. Let's say we want our current question to be rendered when the user indicates that changes were made to the cryptographic protocols used. We can do this by first specifying the question identifier that maps to the conditional question. We can then specify the response to this question upon which we should render the current question. Moving on, we can select the question input format, such as whether the response to the question should be specified via dropdown, Boolean toggle, multi-select, or radio buttons. Finally, we arrive at the security scoring decisions section. This is where we assign a numerical security impact score to the question based on the response received. We can now submit our question and see it get applied to the security impact questionnaire. Here we are back in the security impact questionnaire for our blockchain verification service. You'll notice that you don't see our newly onboarded question yet. You might recall that we only wanted to render the question if the user indicated that any changes were made to cryptographic approaches in between releases. Let's go ahead and indicate that there were cryptographic changes. And now our question has been rendered. You're always free to edit existing questions and their rendering behavior as your team's decision-making workflows evolve. Let's take a look at how a product security engineer can use the product security portal to explore organizational assets. Here, users are able to see all of the product inventory that has been onboarded and gathered via everyday use of the portal, as well as the various security requests that were associated with each product. At a glance, the user will be able to filter tables entries by product area or any other product context key that was onboarded. We can also download a CSV of our search by clicking on the Download CSV button. Let's click on one of our products that was onboarded. At a glance, we're able to see specific metadata that relates to this product, such as ticketing system metadata as well as information that helps us determine stakeholders and technical contacts. The information below, product details onboarded, will be the consistent metadata that is carried over from request to request. In addition to viewing core product details, we can view version-specific information that has been tracked over the course of multiple security assessment requests through the product security portal. You can see that as we go through the different versions of the product, we can see in real time the changes in Git repositories as well as artifact information. This helps ProdSec engineers track specific changes from version to version as they conduct their security assessments. In addition, it provides an easy-to-navigate historical inventory of all products serviced by our team. Just as we could update core product context, we are also able to edit the metadata and context for existing product versions in our inventory. As the security team's scope increases, new security tools may have to be onboarded into existing workflows at a moment's notice, or some tools may become suddenly deprecated. Our team has found it useful to use the product security portal as a location to maintain tooling documentation so that members of the engineering team do not have to split their security education and servicing across multiple knowledge platforms. As a result, the product security portal defines an extensible schema pattern that allows ProtSec engineers to add or update documentation for their tooling of choice and markup. Now, getting all your tooling documentation in one location is as simple as writing a readme. You may recall earlier in the demo, we mentioned that you can extend the portal's workflow functionalities by adding new YAML files to, st to statically configure custom input forms. Here is an example of a YAML file that is responsible for driving the rendering of our pen test form. You can see some of the higher order keys that are used for the business logic of the form and automation, as well as definitions of front end components that specify how these form elements are rendered. At the moment, our portal does most of the heavy lifting with regards to rendering custom forms, so devs can focus solely on perfecting the business logic of their security flows on the back end. We are currently working on optimizations to this flow definition process so that devs will also be able to easily add or modify back end business logic without needing to write a lot of code. These changes will be ready by the time we open source the product security portal, 
making the end-to-end -end definition and release of custom security workflows as painless and streamlined as possible. All right, well, great. Well, um, we hope that demo was informative and exciting for you guys, and hopefully you were able to identify some ways in which our tool could help alleviate some of the stresses your, your own product security teams face at high growth organizations. Um, but just to summarize, we want to drive home a few uh, pieces of impact, some, basically some things that we think our, our portal does pretty well. Um, so the first of that is that we've uh, created a tool that captures the context of each app and product that requires a security assessment. And we do not proceed with security assessments until that context is captured. Um, so we've, we've essentially defined a way for, for product security engineers to specify their own context gathering forms uh, via static YAML configurations. And now you, you can proceed with security assessments knowing that all of the information that you are given is information that you personally um, made sure was provided in a in a you know sanitized fashion. You can know that you're gathering the exact context you need for a particular product, and you can move forward with your assessment knowing that um, it's the correct context and not uh, and not incorrect context for some other product, or it, it, you know that you're not missing information essentially. Uh, secondly, we've uh, created a tool that determines security requirements based on product and release change context for every new request. So this is really, I think, the, one of the more exciting things we do. Um, because our, our tool has basically enabled that hybrid security uh, engagement model where we are allowing users to define uh, actions to take given particular product context and selectively apply automation questionnaires that determine the security impact of a change to a particular product based on context changes. And uh, once that workflow is automated, it's, it's just a matter of putting the determined, predetermined tasks essentially in front of a product security engineer to carry out the necessary work. And you can use that product context to also determine applicable regulatory requirements that have been set out by your organization. Uh, we've also created a tool that um, builds a detailed product inventory via mandatory context capture. Um, so we are using this product inventory to report on risk and control maturity of the leadership um, at the moment at Splunk. But you know, there's so much more you can do with product inventory. Um, we have essentially built a way to capture an evolving history of product context across assessments, right? Because every, um, every incoming product request will always have a change to its product context as that product lifecycle evolves. And we are logging all of those changes via our uh, product inventory tracker. And we can use this history to drive insights and accountability. So we can pinpoint steps in a product's timeline where certain key security events or decisions occurred because we know exactly what security controls applied to a particular product at a particular time uh, based on our automation. And uh, we've enabled insightful exploration of you know, this thorough product and security assessment inventory via the uh, awesome product inventory explorer that we built. Uh, so you know, we think that's a really handy feature of the portal. And then finally, we have created a tool that enables total configuration of context gathering. So, uh, this is honestly my favorite part of the portal, is that we've, we've made it possible for any product security engineer to statically define questions and input controls to ask engineering teams to gather the context they need to effectively service you know, the product. And again, you do that with the simple YAML files. We've, we've built a very robust front-end framework that takes these YAML files, um, static configurations, and renders out the form uh, that also performs error checking based on regular expressions uh, that you would provide. So you can get immediately actionable input um, upon request submission. So you don't have to worry about interfacing back and forth uh, between yourself and engineering teams. You can now just have a request be submitted and immediately get to working on it. And finally, we've enabled context-based security impact decision-making and task automation controls. So you saw how we use it, uh, the product security portal to uh, automate JIRA task creation, and then assign those JIRA tasks to product security engin engineers on our team. Um, but you, know, there's, you, can, you can do so much more with it, right? You can also define uh, automation. You could uh, use it to define questionnaires as we have also done, where you can now take product context as well as questionnaire response context and use that to render out future questions to ask to gather more context. So it's this crazy self-feeding loop that we've built, but it's all very configurable within the admin workflow, um, where all you need 
do is define conditionals based on project context that you want to satisfy and your automation will go ahead and take care of it. So if you can think of a way to automate it, you can you can build it through through this portal. It's all customizable to your heart's content. You know, so keeping all of these great features in mind, um, you know, we're really happy with what we've built, but there's still some things that we want to uh, to push um, and we want to get out there. So these are the things we have on our roadmap for the future. Um, they most certainly won't be ready by the time we open source them. We open source this tool, but we think they're they're cool things that can still really enrich uh, the experience of the product security portal. So Andrew will give you a little bit of insight to the roadmap we have planned out. Cool. Thanks, Sanjeev. So at a technical level, uh, we designed the product security portal APIs to be very modular and generic. And since this tool is deployed in an environment for us that touches on many parts of the infrastructure our devs use, we actually have many opportunities to increase the efficiency for delivering security assurance and risk reporting to the organization. So the first of such roadmap item is to create automation around auto updating our product context that we gather as much as possible. So this would leverage the use of say CICD APIs, uh, infrastructure like Kubernetes APIs and AWS APIs or GCD APIs if we detect them during onboarding. So and if you recall in the previous few slides, um, in addition to providing a way to convert unknown risk to known risk, we want to optimize the risk reporting and management to convert the known risk to address risk. And to do this, another roadmap item on our radar would be to actually leverage the use of dashboarding to build the risk reporting directly onto the portal itself. Awesome, thank you guys. So we hope that throughout this presentation, uh, looking at all the examples and the demo, uh, you have come to the same conclusion like we did, um, which is a hybrid engagement model where we are gathering the context of a product and determining the kind of security assessments that uh, need to be done based on the context helps both developers and product security teams uh, be very effective because it takes out the mundane tasks of gathering context and determining what process applies to what product. Uh, and lets uh, developers actually focus on product development and addressing security issues and not gathering context and same for product security people like it really helps them focus on the throttling and the high impact security assessment tasks like like look at the output of some some tooling validating it or doing pen tests so that's all we have uh, happy to answer any questions at this point thank you very much for coming in and attending our talk